Hi, everyone. Welcome to this new session on Network Solutions. Today, we will talk about the revolutionizing network infrastructure with HPOL, Hybrid Passive Optical LAN. I'm Charles Dimlin, and I'm your host for today's session, which will last about an hour. So before we start, a few reminders as usual. This webinar is recorded. If that might be an issue for you, we encourage you to disconnect now. During your presentation, all the lines will be mute. Um, but you can share, of course, your question, your comment on the panel, and we will have a Q&A session at the end to take all the questions. Uh, and of course, the presentation of this webinar will be available at the end of the session. I already added a few collaterals um, about uh, HPOL, so don't hesitate to, to check it out. Today, our speaker is Slaven Rumenjak, Senior Solution Architect. Hello, Slaven, how are you? Hello, Charlotte, good morning. Uh... Good morning, everyone. I'm good, good, ready to go. Let's go then. Yeah, thanks again, Charlotte. So everyone, good morning, good afternoon, and warm welcome to this webinar about passive optical LAN. And as we like to say, enhanced version hybrid passive optical LAN, networking technology that is considered an alternative to traditional copper-based switch network we are all familiar with. During this webinar, we'll explore the key features, benefits, and use cases of HBOL. My name is Slaven Rumenyak, and I'm a senior data solution architect within ALE, focusing on the core and mission critical networks that involved Omni and Nokia product portfolios, for which HBOL is one of the good examples. This is our agenda for this webinar. I would like to start with a few words about uh, the partnership between Nokia and ALE and the solutions we provide together. After that, I will try to explain Paul technology, passive optical and technology and its benefits, as well as all the advantages behind the concept of hybrid pole. I will also provide an overview of all the components of hybrid pole, and we will end up with a short conclusion, a short summary, after which it will be your turn to ask questions. So let's start. Uh, Combined network solutions like this one between Nokia and LE is not really a new thing. Uh, not that long time ago, we worked as a single company providing end-to-end -end solutions around the world. We split our paths, uh, we became Alcatelucent Enterprise and the rest of Alcatelucent was acquired by Nokia. So now with cooperation agreement between two companies, we continue to deliver network solutions that leverage the strength and product lines of both companies. Nokia's contribution to the combined solutions include GPON Paul technology from the Fixed Network Group. Then there is a Wavelight DWDM for enterprises uh, from the Optic Group and IPMPLS routers portfolio from the IP Routing Group. Nokia, as you know, has a primary focus on WAN, MAN networks and large data center networks. On the other hand, ALE brings its broad portfolio of Omni switches and Stellar's Wi Fi solution to the table. These products, combined with different services offered by LE, make for a comprehensive solution for enterprises and campus networks, as well as different industries and verticals. Hybrid pole. So why, where is the market potential for hybrid pole? Hybrid pole is a good example of previously mentioned combined solutions for which we see a lot of traction and interest from our partners and customers. Hybrid pole has gained popularity because it provides numerous benefits that are applicable to multiple vertical markets. It can be implemented in various industries and each sector can leverage the advantages offered by this technology. We are, however, focused and have uh, most experience in hospitality, construction, government and enterprises. If you're interested in exploring specific use case, please reach out to your local ALE representative for more details. So uh, let's start with uh, technology, passive optical LAN technology. Passive optical LAN, or POL, as, you, as I might say, uh, is a way to structure a network, replacing the access switches with end user equipment called ONTs. Traditional LAN can be built as a two or three tier network. Two tier network, as you can see on this slide, uh, combines access and aggregation layer in one node. From these active nodes, a network of copper cables is deployed to provide connectivity between network outlet and active equipment. With a passive optical LAN, ONTs are connected directly to a centralized node called OLT through optical fiber and splitters, passive equipment. 
and as you can see from the figure on this slide. So it is an optical single mode fiber all the way to the end user, avoiding upper cable installation. In other words, passive optical LAN is a passive optical network applied to campus and building networks. The main values of passive optical LAN versus traditional copper Ethernet LAN or switch LAN are the following. So first, it's a future proof uh, as an existing pole can evolve without replacing the fiber. Moving from one gig to 10 gig speed or even 25 gig pawn network doesn't require the placement of existing single mode fiber. Further on, it also supports high bandwidth up to 10 and 25 gigabit today. It requires less, invest, less investment in cabling and active equipment. With less equipment, of course, floor space and power consumption are improving. Uh, for uh, power, power consumption for active equipment and potentially related UPSs are decreasing. The single mode fiber can expand up to 20 kilometers with no active equipment and no dedicated telecom closets between the OL3 central node and ONT end user node. This also translates into equipment, real estate, power carbon footprint, and other savings. Here on this slide, you will see what I just mentioned. So thanks, thanks to its scalable bandwidth and capacity, optical LAN allows to protect the investment for a much longer time compared to traditional LAN. Also, optic fiber has many more advantages compared to cut cabling, as you can see on the slide. You can see here that uh, uh, different speed, or we can increase our speed on existing single mode fiber, single mode fiber while you see development of, diff on, of different category cabling. So category five that we started with 100 meg up to category six and seven for 10 gigabit per second speed. Also on this slide, you will see the footprint of uh, 144 multi-mode fiber cable 144 cable, copper cables versus a single mode, uh, 144 single mode fibers connected here. So these are all advantages that we just mentioned. And as you can see, it is in uh, power, it is in uh, heating uh, uh, decreasing, but also in a physical footprint that you will have uh, in your passive optical LAN network. This is one of example that uh, we took from Nokia side, basically what is cost saving for the next five years when you uh, deploy passive optical LAN versus switch network. So uh, I will not go into this because it's just one of example. You can also go to that side and basically put the size of the network that you consider, and then you will see what will be your uh, CAPEX saving, OPEX saving, OPEX saving uh, when you deploy passive optical LAN. As I said, it is just one of the examples that uh, we run. So here, a little bit more technical overview of what I did. Uh, let's say uh, different uh, building blocks of a passive of a passive optical LAN. So the, uh, let's start with OLT, which is a central node. This is device that terminates the common endpoint of an optical network. It implements a PON protocol such as that's defined, as you can see, with ITUT G984, meaning it does GPON encapsulation between Ethernet technology of the network and Ethernet technology on the end user side, basically. So for uh, OLT provides also management and maintenance functions for the sub uh, for the network and all the uh, components of the passive optical LAN. Device that aggregates all optical signals from ONT into a single multiplex beam of a light, and then it is converted into electrical signal formatted to Ethernet packet type, so standard layer two or layer three forwarding. So this is the description of central node, which is OLT here. Then uh, if we move along the network, then it's uh, on the end user side, you will find ONT devices. So it's a single subscriber device that terminates any of the distributed endpoints. So it implements also PON protocol. It does transition between Ethernet and PON protocol and adapts uh, PON packets to subscriber service interfaces. So between that, connect, it, it also connects end user devices. So ONT's device that you will plug uh, end user desktop, phones, and so on. 
into the GPON network. And it provides optical to electrical signal conversion as you move from Ethernet to a uh, fiber uh, network. Um, basically, uh, in between OLT and ONTs, you will have your point to point fiber infrastructure. There is no active components in that part. The only thing there is the like, uh, installation of uh, fibers and passive splitters. And passive splitters, it's completely passive device. What it does is that what that it splits uh, into with different ratios. So officially, or basically in theory, it will go one to 128 splitter cable, but then uh, more realistic is one to 32 on one to 16 uh, devices that can be connected to one single port of OLTs. So it usually it will be uh, 32 devices of OMT on this side of the splitter connected to one OLT port. Uh, as you can see also here, uh, there are like two standard uh, uh, two standards that we are working with it now right now. So it is GPON and it has dual speed. It's 2.5 gigabit per second downstream, and downstream is considered the traffic that goes from central node. OLT to end user nodes ONT, while on uh, 1.2 gigabit per second speed is the speed of the traffic from ONTs to OLT, which is then called upstream. In addition to GPON, which is gigabit passive optical line, we are also using XGS PON, which is 10 gigabit. So it is symmetrical 10 gigabit per second speed in both ways, downstream and upstream. Uh, let's talk about hybrid pole. So what we bring into this uh, pole solution. So what is uh, what is what would be our solution uh, differences between hybrid pole and pole technology. So uh, what Nokia brings, uh, you know, to the table when creating a H pole solution, we still need a first building block that is Nokia passive optical line, as we just described uh, previously. It consists of OLT central node used for central processing, switching, controlling function, network management. And there will be, of course, fiber, the whole fiber network infrastructure, including a single mode fiber and splitters. There would be also ONT uh, at the end user side, either in a, in a form of a small, you know, like small footprint box or uh, ONT uh, technology on SFP. So ONT without physical interfaces really, and it can be uh, just plugged into the switch. In this case, ONT is not used for user connectivity. For, but only for the access switch connectivity. So let's not forget also PCC management tool needed to manage pole network with of Nokia products. So then uh, what we bring uh, further on is ALE network. So it is ALE building block. So core switches at the data center, uh, the switches connect to the ethernet side of the OLT and handle the connectivity and aggregation functions in the data center environment. To these switches, you will connect network management stations, router, routers, uh, storage uh, network, application service, and everything else you need. It. ALE access switches at the pole edge, which will be used then, it will position at the edge, as I said, and it will be used to connect the end users. So this will be used for user connectivity, uh, physical wired uh, users. In addition to that, uh, we are also bringing to table Stellar Wi-Fi access point. ALE's Stellar solution offers enterprise-grade wireless access point that can be integrated into the network for providing Wi-Fi connectivity. And then, of course, there is an OmniVista network management tool for managing ALE wired and wireless products. But not only products, we use them as uh, well for users, IoTs, and devices connectivity. As a result, deployed solution will benefit of all the advantages of classic optical LAN network but in addition will have increased availability and security features advanced network services and enterprise grade wireless LAN solution so something that is not possible only to achieve with passive optical LAN equipment today and uh, yeah it's a it's a note that single european vendor for end-to-end -end solution because uh, yeah, you will see why is that. So uh, what are the local area network values? What are our wired portfolio brings to this table? So as you can see, 
Nokia's poor, Nokia passive optical is still one piece of the solution, and ALE networking is the other. We have seen that advantages of uh, passive optical LAN, and now uh, let's see what advantages when you involve and when you include ALE networking into that hybrid passive optic to in order to build hybrid passive optical LAN solution. So this uh, technology, well, passive optical LAN network technology was designed for the carrier residential market. And for this reason, uh, Paul lacks many enterprise services. The ALE network adds advanced enterprise grade features to passive optical LAN. You can see that the feature list on this slide. We won't go into the details of every of these lines and every of these feature, but uh, keep in mind the main points what we offer. Enterprise grade services for LAN and wireless LAN. High availability on all networks layer. That's I will show you in the next slide something that is not uh, possible to do with ONT at the moment. Then with uh, ALE, you will get unified management for wired and wireless LAN. You will get high PoE support because there are there is PoE support on ONT's devices. But if you need uh, let's say 95 watts, it is still not available on Nokia equipment, but it is available on ALE equipment. Also, we can provide a higher uh, port scalability than with ONTs. Then uh, there is, of course, IoT management and many integrated value add services for enterprises, such as guest portal, uh, BYOD, location based services, asset tracking, and so on. When I said increased high availability, you can see what it means uh, on this slide. Basically, at this moment, uh, ONT is a single point of failure. At this moment, there is no uh, ONT device that could have two connectivities to the fiber network. And in case that uh, this uh, single uh, fiber uh, fails, basically your uh, connectivity uh, behind this ONT is uh, broken and they are out of the network. What we bring with uh, Omni switches and hybrid pole is that uh, we can connect two SFPs or NTs. So it is SFP plugged into uh, to OmniSwitch that brings ONT functionality. So transition between fiber technology and internet technology. We can uh, plug two of them into a single device, or we can use virtual chassis. So two devices, two physical devices that will uh, work as a, as a single logical, act as a single logical device. And you can even have higher level of redundancy in the switches it themselves. So you can plug one of the SFPs, ONTs functionality, into each of these uh, Omni switches. So you have additional high availability in terms of two optical uh, links plus two hardware switches, two devices. And of course, there are some other high availability that uh, up, that is present, some higher availability features that are present on the uh, fiber network between splitters and uh, OLT central devices. So you can have redundancy in the each car in the within the same chassis with two LT cards. You can have redundancy between uh, two different chassis. And of course, you can have redundancy on the uh, Ethernet side, on the data center side. Again, uh, ALE switches here that support virtual chassis can bring additional step to this high availability. Also, um, what does bring a network management of OmniVista? Because uh, some uh, some customers, some business partner will say there is still need for to have uh, like two management uh, platforms, which is true. But I think also <clears throat> not a management uh, not a management management guy myself. But here you can see this uh, this slide with network management uh, really uh, describes the value of uh, both solutions of of hybrid pole solution. So here you will see that PCC which is a network a network management from Nokia. It is Paul Command Center, <clears throat> focused on managing of network connectivity and the configuration and network elements, such as the OLT central node and ONT edge devices. And you can see, uh, you can also import the floor plan on which you can place ONTs, and you can monitor the health of all devices and related ports. You, you will get uh, great statistic details and everything but that's where it stops it is omnivista that will give you all the needed details of connected users and their applications 
It is OmniVista that would be used for unified management and policy authentication for wired and wireless users. It is OmniVista that will give you insight to applications. With OmniVista, you will be able to see top users and top applications in your network, which you cannot see with PCC. With OmniVista, you will also see, uh, be able to see client analytics as well as IoT management. And all these great features are not available at PCC or Paul Command Center. So in most cases, PCC will be used during the time of network setup. So network administrator will provision OLT central node, um, point the edge devices and all the services needed. You can see PCC as a, as a management tool for the core and let's say kind of underlay network. And once this is done, this network is provisioned, you will not need to use PCC very often anymore. It will be used as a monitoring or troubleshooting tool in case it is needed. It is more OmniVista that will be used not only for the configuration and administration of AOS devices, but it is also a tool to manage connectivity of users, IOTs, and different devices. This is a real strength of OmniVista tool. So this slide really describes the focus of each building block within HPOL solution. In addition to uh, great advantages of having, uh, you know, wired uh, Omni switches, wired portfolio, second main reason to select for HPOL versus PurePOL is the enterprise grade Wi-Fi solution. In with Nokia Pole solution, uh, there are some OMT models that provide Wi-Fi connectivity and Wi-Fi services. However, this is Wi-Fi for residential users. Residential Wi-Fi is designed to provide services to a single user or home. Therefore, it does not implement enterprise-grade features such as automatic radio optimization among access points, high availability, roaming, or load balancing. These are necessary requirements in the enterprise environment, which means that ONT's Wi-Fi is not suitable for enterprise customers in general. On the other hand, Stellar Wireless LAN is natively designed to provide Wi-Fi for enterprises. It is, based, it is based on an intelligent, distributed, controlled architecture and complies with all the necessary wireless LAN requirements of today's enterprises. Whenever a project requires enterprise-grade Wi-Fi, pure passive optical LAN ONT cannot provide it. This is the reason that some customers will use ONTs for user connectivity, but will use Stellar Wi-Fi solution connected to Nokia ONT user port. So HPOL solution also includes ONT plus Stellar Wi-Fi access point. So, uh, we described a little bit solutions of passive optical LAN and the solution with hybrid. So let's see what the uh, components of a uh, hybrid passive optical LAN solution. So here you will see it is a high level, uh, basically network design. Excuse me, I mentioned uh, all the components here already. So still with ALE HPOL, uh, it will take uh, best advantages of both worlds passive optical LAN and Ethernet LAN and wireless LAN, offering combined benefits for the end customers in terms of cost saving and performance. So on the pole side, there is a ALE HPOL leverages the point to multi-point uh, architecture, the single mode fiber benefits and the small factor ONTs. So you can see a mandatory block, it's still a OLT central node, there is this uh, point to multi point fiber, including passive equipment of splitters. And there is an ONT either in a, in a, in a form of ONT device or in a form of SFP. On the network side, ALE leverages the core switches at the core layer. So this is like a core Ethernet network, or what you can, we can call it also Ethernet LAN or data center, basically because here you will have connected all your voice. Uh, devices, all the NMSs, you will have a network, wired and wireless network that you can, you know, expand here to connect all the IOTs. Uh, to this part, you will have your firewall, security devices, uh, Ethernet peering, and so on. So this is uh, this core layer or data center layer can be done with the core 
switches from LE portfolio, and of course, wireless LAN. <clears throat> wireless LAN. So uh, also uh, as a result, HPOL inherits the benefit of cabling and active high availability equipment optimization from the passive optical LAN. But it also benefits, as you can see here, from the high availability, scalability, and security advanced network services that will be uh, provided by wireless LAN and Ethernet LAN. So, uh, yeah, uh, two different kind of types we can uh, deliver of a hybrid pole. So one is that will include Omni switch on the end user side, and you will have pointy here just to connect to the Omni switch. Omni switch is device that will be used for end user connectivity. While uh, either this can be either in the form of ONT device or what we do is we use SFP ONT that is plugged in directly to the Omni switch. So all the services here for end users will be provided through Omni switch or the other point is like you can have ONT for wired connectivity and Stellar for wireless connectivity. So there are kind of two options, uh, HPOL, we call it HPOL, option one and option two. And in both cases, uh, you will still be able to provide a superior wireless LAN, uh, guest room common areas, pure internet LAN for administration offices. So all the benefits for wired and wireless connectivity. So a little bit more technical details. So you know when you look for a data sheet and you know when you look for in our uh, price list, Basically, a management platform, which is Paul Common Center, PCC. This is advanced management solution focused on, of course, uh, central node OLT and uh, ONTs from Nokia. Then uh, you have a central node, which can be four, eight, or 16 port chassis. Uh, and it is uh, the, the name of this product line is 7360 ISAM FX. So it is a frame-based multi-service access platform with high density connectivity for end users. There is always only two on each node. There are two slots for network connectivity for your data center connectivity. And there are two slots and two cards for redundancy. And then the difference between these chassis is just the number of uh, ports that are used for uh, connectivity of end users. Uh, ONT uh, product lines are called 7368 ISAM ONT. So the, those are devices that connect to individual users for the network. So it can be, you know, ONT, it can be like a full uh, device, or of course, uh, ONT capability and features can be uh, delivered through SFP ONT. So these are solution elements of Nokia. A little bit more details, I will not go through all the port counts and capabilities, but basically uh, there is a different uh, card for to connect to your data center network. And yeah, uh, differences, uh, it's not in technology, basically differences are in number of ports and uh, throughput of the card and throughput of the ports. So these uh, cards are also uh, used uh, to connect for uh, network management of the solution and uh, uh, control management, uh, basically, here you will configure your switching and routing uh, uh, capabilities. Then, uh, as previously mentioned, ISAM uh, diff three different chassis with four, eight, or 16 slots for line termination card, so for end user connectivity. And connectivity that these cards you will use for end user connectivity that can be either, you know, for uh, GPON or XGS. XGS stands for 10 gigabit connectivity. So three different, uh, you know, like, uh, the different modules when you want to configure your central node. Uh, if you go to ONTs, then of course, uh, there is a naming convention. And as you can see here, number one means it's only a single port, uh, SFP ONTs and XS or SFP ONT. Basically, when you see like uh, 040, it means there are like four ports, uh, gigabit ports for connectivity. P stands for POE. So with naming connectivity, with naming convention, you will know uh, in general, what you can get from this ONT device. So you can start for a small print of just four ports, and basically we call it media converter because it converts uh, this fiber uh, technology and fiber connectivity and provides uh, connectivity for end users copper one gig ports. 
Some of them, as I said, can be uh, uh, with uh, POE capabilities, but not 95, for instance, if you need it for specific artists, that can be provided through OmniSwitch. Then you can have uh, bigger OMTs, like uh, with a uh, higher number of ports. You can have, uh, that's what uh, is about, like a business, we call it like business gateway, because then you will have more than one user connected here. It can be ex expandable to, with a module, it can be expandable to 12 ports. Then you can have SFP form factor. So this is what we use to connect our Omni switches to the uh, optical network, also one gig or 10 gig capabilities. And uh, there are, uh, it's not here showed, but there are uh, ONTs with 5.5 capabilities. So yeah, also includes uh, up to like AX uh, a protocol, uh, but uh, 802.11 AX, but yeah, it is still only for residential users. So all the benefits that I mentioned before are not at the moment supported here on ONT, while they are supported on Stellar Wi-Fi solution. PCC, uh, as I already mentioned, it's a great tool, great management system for monitoring, for, for, for configuring as well. So it's really easy to configure OLT through it. It is a central node. It is really kind of simple, intuitive the, to configure ONTs with that. It's really easy to configure needed services and deploy to central node and end user node. So it's a great tool uh, for configuration and then further on for monitoring. Uh, for, for reading a lot of statistics, but of course uh, it is focused on core network. It is focused on network connectivity. So what we bring to the table. So we can still, as I mentioned several times, you still need PCC tool uh, to, uh, to configure and monitor uh, passive optical line equipment from Nokia. So uh, it will be a central node that we requ require in this solution. And then we uh, use, uh, we want to use SFP ONTs. What we bring with ALE, we bring OmniVista Network Management Station, we bring our wired switches portfolio and wireless LAN. And it's not only equipment that we bring, we bring a lot of functionalities, a lot of features that are applicable for enterprise network and that are not available on just the pure pole solution. So security certifications, you know that our switches are certified by different uh, governmental bodies, you know, uh, uh, governmental, we have uh, yeah, different certifications, uh, zero trust network access. So we are not only, you know, focusing to have zero trust network access for uh, switches, but we also have several steps in this concept also for connectivity of users, IOTs and devices. So it all involves uh, identification, authentication, uh, authorization, and we continue, continuously monitoring the traffic. You know, we don't have these capabilities on passive optical LAN. So uh, with this, with the concept of hybrid, you can have a great view into end users applications, into end user traffic, into end users themselves. And of course, you are already aware, I mean, it's uh, all the features that you will get with the pure switch network, like IoT connectivity and management here as well. All the features that you are familiar that you can implement with switch network, now you can also implement on the passive optical, passive optical LAN network. Basically, uh, I, I gave you a little bit of details of the of the uh, equipment, pro equipment from Nokia. So here also the little bit of details about equipment from ALE, from our switches. So not to go through all the, you know, like uh, port speed and port counts and feature sets like this, but basically uh, I want to emphasize first that we did validation for GPON SFP and XGS PON SFP to all these product lines. So it was validated by SQA. It is not just plug and play, although it is uh, SFP. Uh, it is not just, uh, you cannot just use uh, SFP ONT from Nokia and plug it to any other switch. There are requirements in, uh, that we did with our engineering. And we can give you a list of ports that you can use for, for all of these product lines where you can plug in, you know, like either gigabit uh, SFP or 10 gigabit uh, PON SFP. 
Also, it is important to say that we did validate, so this is for end user side, different, uh, different products that uh, can fit in the different markets. So basically we did uh, 6360 products for small and medium businesses. Then we did this at 6560 product line because it uh, gives you higher POE devices if you need. Uh, also, it gives you multi-port speed. So basically uh, on OINT from Nokia, you have also 2.5 gig port speed interfaces, but not in such a density that you can get on 6560. For uh, environment uh, that uh, will require a higher temperature. Then we, we did also this validation on 6465T models. So those, as you know, it's models that have temperature hardened and it can run up to 60 degrees Celsius. And of course, we did a validation of uh, PON SFPs on uh, Gigabit Metro, our the latest product line 6570M, which provides you with all the Metro functionalities and metro certifications so basically uh we wanted to cover all the possibility markets and if you remember on our, one of our first uh, slides there are uh, multiple there are there are a list of all the markets that uh, passive optical on and of course then in that case hybrid passive so high hybrid passive optical on can have a, a great deal and uh, influence and of course, uh, not to go to all the details of uh, our Stellar wireless LAN uh, solution, but uh, as you know, uh, we have two Stellar families, 1200 family, which implements the Wi-Fi 5 standard, and 1300 family, which implements the latest generation Wi-Fi 6 standard. So we're expanding this portfolio with new, of course, high-end access points. So basically, as previously said, this can, those can be connected either to OmniSwitch, but can be uh, also connected to ONTs from Nokia. It doesn't matter uh, from point of view of wireless solution. Uh, last component of Omni switches of uh, ALE side basically is OmniVista Cyrus. Not to repeat myself again, but a great tool. This is your business tool that you will use in your network. This is the tool that you will uh, have to use, uh, not have to use, but it really benefits to use it more often than a PCC tool that is basically used to configure your core network. With this, uh, with this uh, tool, with OmniVista, you will have all your analytics of traffic, of, of end users, uh, business, uh, business uh, and smarter operations and uh, in general, you will have, you can provide better customer experience. So not only network experience, but better customer experience with different metrics and analytics that you can read from OmniVista and are very important for your, for your customers, for your networks. And basically conclusion of what we talk about uh, this high level. So a uh, hybrid passive optic LAN is combination of Nokia technology uh, building block and yeah, there is a still uh, OLT central side uh, infrastructure, fiber infrastructure and ONT functionality needed for this. And there is a part of ALE building block that will give you solutions and technologies already developed for enterprises for years, because we are working on this for years already. So uh, it is solution that can fit for enterprises and organizations with mid or large premises. So uh, typically for networks that are you know, created with one or several buildings over long distances, uh, if you remember one of the slides, uh, a distance uh, that we can provide this uh, passive optic line can run over 20 kilometer, up to 20 kilometers with a single mode fiber and medium to high user density with requirement, which is standard requirement, for advanced networking and Wi-Fi capabilities. So yeah, we can integrate all the data services of voice and video services into single, sorry, single optical backbone and a hybrid passive optical line with a part can support the future bandwidth growth without disruptive changes to customer cable infrastructure. We also run to this that uh, there is no more development for different category of uh, copper cable. So still, uh, you know, all this uh, higher speed and all the feature set can be implemented on the existing uh, infrastructure. Hybrid passive optic LAN provides carrier grade reliability and 
military grade security. Yes, of course, uh, because it supported it both uh, of both parties, both building blocks, uh, it's from Nokia and from LE. But of course, uh, basically only with enterprise grade services, we can provide a higher level of uh, availability and redundancy. If you remember, ONT is a single point of failure. If you lose a link to ONT, all the traffic, all the users behind it will be cut off the network. With uh, OmniSwitch, you can place, uh, you can have two links, uh, five, two fiber uh, links connected to the switch or to even two switches running as a virtual chassis. And uh, these two links can be con connected either to redundant card on one chassis of OLT or to two different OLTs. So hybrid uh, passive optic LAN, we see really as a unique combination uh, that will bring to your customers like more, most reliable and high availability network in the market today. And of course, uh, the let's not forget about lower uh, total cost of ownership, OPEX and CAPEX compared to traditional copper-based LAN. As a last slide, I would like to include here the the list of your contact person that are dealing with passive optical LAN and uh, Nokia equipment. Of course, you can always uh, contact your uh, local ALE representative. You can come to Solution Architect team that I'm part of, so for more technical details. But basically, this is per uh, region. This is your contact uh, related to all the business related that involves Nokia. This is the end of my presentation. I hope. Uh, it was, it was, uh, it was I, I hope I was able to introduce you with concept of passive optic LAN as well as hybrid passive optic LAN. And now, uh, please, uh, this is your time now for questions and I will try to answer uh, all your questions here. If not, then, uh, you know, I will follow up with your questions. Thank you, Slavan, for this presentation. Uh, before we, we jump right into the Q&A, uh, I will have two surveys to run by you. It will take us just a few minutes, uh, so let's jump right in. Okay, first question, uh, are you interested for another? I'll let you answer. Um... Okay, I will give you a few more seconds. Most of you already answered, to be honest, it's pretty quick. Uh, as a reminder, as we're waiting for everybody to answer, uh, you have a few collaterals about HP, uh, HPO, sorry, and you have the presentation uh, that I put in the handout section, so don't hesitate to download all those. It's all yours. Okay. Thank you for all your answers. Obviously, we tend for yes. Uh, not surprised on that one. Uh, and let's move to the second question. Uh, pretty simple yes, no as well. Would you like a dedicated mating with your ALE HPO expert? Yes, no as well. Uh, as soon as you answer, don't uh, hesitate to uh, go on the question section to write down any question you may have about the session. As uh, Slavin just showed, you have all the, 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 the local contacts if you want also to reach out uh, and have a question, and we'll jump right in in a few seconds uh, on your questions. Waiting a few more seconds. Okay, let's go. Thank you for all the answers. Let's jump all um, on this question. First one. Slaven, what is the difference between uh, GP on and GSP on in terms of the feature? Uh, the difference between GP on and XGS on. Yes. Yeah, the difference, uh, there is no difference in feature set. Basically, uh, those are technologies related to uh, different speed. So uh, GP on is uh, 2.4, 1.2 speed, uh, you know, downstream, upstream. With XGS, it is 10 gigabit uh, per second speed, uh, symmetrical. So this is XGS, X stands for 10, G for gigabit, and S for symmetrical speed downstream and upstream. Okay, uh, moving to another question. Can OmniVista control the access point? Yes. 
Okay, it's still about OmniVista. Does it support auto CAD file? Or oh, and two? Is support. it like a Uh, which file can you can you auto autocad no it, it doesn't support it no it's uh, yeah. i i think if it if you matter if you if you're talking about uh, uh encapsulation and the pdus let's say from a, a fiber technology no it does not it is still focused only on ethernet Okay, uh, another question. Does uh, Edgepole support SFP28, QSFP, and QSFP28? Uh, these are all uh, SFPs related to Ethernet connectivity. So, yes, it does, basically on end user side or on data center side. Uh, there are specific uh, SFPs. So, there is no QSFP28 that has ONT capabilities. Uh, what is specific to HPOL is that our Omni switches will support GPON SFP or XGS SFP because they are needed. We still need to make transition from fiber technology to uh, to to Ethernet technology. But basically, then what is behind that? What is on Ethernet? Uh, whatever speed you need, either on data center or on the end user side, it is supported by our switches as standard. Of course, it makes more sense to have a these uh, high speed uh, SFPs on data center then on uh, on basically on the on the end user side uh, that are connected with one gig or 10 gig okay another question um since it is not an uh, internet technology end to end how our data and voice vlan transfer through gpon network okay um Basically, yeah, uh, that's uh, that's the role of uh, OLT, uh, central, uh, you know, central node and ONT. So you will accept Ethernet frame and Ethernet VLANs. It will be tagged, uh, tagged uh, traffic, and uh, basically uh, VLANs are not uh, transparent through uh, passive optical LAN. Uh, they uh, within passive optical LAN, those nodes work in terms of services, but then we can map its similar services to SPB. So, and MPLS services, this type of services, so it's not pure VLAN. And then basically we map uh, ingress information uh, with VLAN to different type of services. So there are two basic ways. So we either can map VLAN to service or we can do trunking. So we can trunk multiple single tag traffic into double tag. So it will be accepted to a single service as a double tech and it will be delivered on the other side of the network and then again these transitions will be done uh, either will uh, uh, external in case of uh, double tech external tag will be removed and you will get the traffic with a single tag and that can be mapped to vlans or if it's service to service it will just be delivered to the specific service uh, from specific service to specific vlan okay we have two more uh, do you have to replace optical splitters when upgrading the optical network from 1G to 10G PON network? No, no, you don't because it's pure passive uh, equipment. So the same as cabling, single mode, you don't need to replace that. And as well, you don't need to replace uh, splitters. Okay, last question I have. What other types of redundancy is provided with Nokia Pole solution? What other? What other type of redundancy? Oh, redundancy. Um, I think I mentioned that a little bit. So with Paul solution, you can have redundant NT cards, the cards that are used to connect the data center. So you can have, uh, you first of all, on a single card, you can have link aggregation if you are using multiple ports. Then you can have two cards to connect to your uh, devices in data center. So, and then you can also use link aggregation between these two cards, so port that uh, are placed on the two different cards. Then you can have redundancy on LT side, so uh, the side, the cards that are used to connect uh, end users or, and with true fiber, fiber interfaces. So you can have redundant card uh, within the chassis or you can have redundancy between uh, two different chassis. So you can have, uh, 
primary card on OLT on OLT one, and you can have redundant card on OLT two. So this is all achievable with uh, passive optical on. But then, as I said, single point of failure is ONT device because at the moment there is only ONT from Nokia with a single connectivity port to fiber infrastructure. And with uh, Omni switches, you can have uh, two SFP ONTs. So you can use two ports either on a single device or you can split, uh, you can use virtual chassis and then you will have one SFP uh, per device, but it's still one logical you know, like one logical node and then uh, redundancy is automatically achieved. Okay, I think that's it. We, I, don't, I don't see any more questions for, for the session. I think we can uh, wrap it up, Slaven. Again, as a reminder, I put uh, the presentation on the handout section with two other collaterals uh, about HPO, so don't hesitate to, to take that with you. Uh, and I will let you close, Slaven. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you. Have a good day.